Happy holidays and thanks again for joining me this week for my update. Last Sunday, I joined Councilmember Andrew Friedson, Delegate Mark Corman, and residents to kick off Hanukkah with the lighting of the menorah on the first night of Hanukkah at the Glen Echo Fire Department. This was a bittersweet ceremony that was on the heels of yet another anti-Semitic act of vandalism, this time at Walt Whitman High School. An anti-Semitic hate message was spray painted on the sign for Walt Whitman High School. I applaud the Walt Whitman High School principal for acting quickly and decrying what is truly unacceptable behavior. The hate message was quickly removed and a letter was sent to students and parents condemning the act. This was the fifth major act of anti-Semitic vandalism we've witnessed this year, and this one made national news. We also have other reports of anti-Semitic incidents as well as other hate crimes and actions against other communities, such as the recent vandalism of historically black church of Scotland AME, the anti-Asian hate crime that occurred in Rockville over the summer, and the protesting and attempts of intimidation by the Proud Boys at the Drag Time Story Hour. Unfortunately, most of the time when these acts of vandalism occur, it's very difficult to find the culprits. However, we still need to do everything in our power to catch and stop these acts from happening. No one should feel unsafe in their own community, and those who peddle this sort of hate need to know that we don't accept or tolerate this type of behavior in Montgomery County. This problem is not going to be solved by our police department or by the Jewish community alone. We must be more intentional and deliberate about how we collectively address acts of hatred like this. It's imperative that we educate our children and all people. I believe that through education and understanding, people can come to understand that we are far more alike than we're different. Sadly, just last week before this incident happened, Whitman's Jewish Student Union led efforts to confront anti-Semitism because of the national rise in anti-Semitic rhetoric and incidents. Students heard testimonials from students hoping to end intolerance and build a safe and inclusive community at Whitman. We could all learn a lesson from Whitman students and those outreach efforts. One of my favorite historians is Howard Zinn. He most famously said, if you don't know history, it's as if you were born yesterday. And if you were born yesterday, that any leader can tell you anything. Whether it is Jewish oppression, the lingering impacts of systemic racism, colonialism, or subjugation of indigenous people, we must teach our factual history, the good and the bad, to discover the underlying basis for the racism, sexism, and religious intolerance that still permeates our society. Montgomery County is a welcoming, progressive, and compassionate community, and we can't allow incidents like these to cause fear or to be normalized. Severely cold temperatures will arrive in Montgomery County this holiday weekend. It's good to remember some things ahead of the frosty temperatures to keep your family and your home safe in sub-freezing temperatures. I encourage everyone to sign up for Alert Montgomery through our county website. It will keep you up to date on weather alerts and other public safety threats. Please bundle up when you go outside and do not go outside for extended periods of time unless you must. And please look out for those who are most in need and who don't have adequate shelter. Our homeless information line is available 24 seven to help anyone in need of a warm place to stay. Callers will also take reports from the public and attempt to locate anyone in need of support and resources. That number is 240-907-2688. We've already seen cold temperatures impact WSSC water pipes. The company has had numerous reports of water main breaks in December. Please contact WSSC by calling, email, or use WSSC app to report a water main break. I also want to share another important number, 301-279-8000. It's non-emergency police access. Normally it's used to file noise complaints. This weekend we hope it's used to report pets that have been left out in the cold without any way to stay warm. COVID-19 cases are once again becoming a concern in our local hospitals. The county's CDC community level status has gone up from low to medium. We all need to keep that change in mind, especially as we gather with family and friends for the holidays. Boost, mask, wash, and test. We're recommending everyone follow this guidance. These four steps still work after almost three years of dealing with this pandemic. The best way to prevent a serious bout of COVID is by being vaccinated and getting a bivalent booster. Only 28% of our residents have received the bivalent booster thus far. With each wave of vaccinations, 
from the initial one and second doses to the boosters to the current bivalent boosters, we're seeing fewer people show up to get their shots. When you look at the breakdown, children, black and Latino adults are the furthest behind. Those who are not vaccinated are being hospitalized and still dying at far higher rates than those who are vaccinated. Getting these shots is still vital to saving lives and preventing illness. So if you're not vaccinated or boosted, get your shot. It works. These preventative measures also help keep flu and RSV numbers down as well. On Saturday, hundreds of people turned out at Westfield Wheaton Mall for our fourth Boosterama and flu shot clinic. 197 people received their COVID booster and 143 people got their flu shot. I'm encouraged by these numbers and I want to thank the Department of Health and Human Services for helping more of our community get protected. When I was at the mall and otherwise out and about over the past week, I was glad to see more people wearing masks. Wearing a mask in a crowded indoor place with poor ventilation is strongly recommended, as well as during nursing home visits, on public transportation, and around people who are at high risk of having serious complications from COVID. It's important to folks continue to test. We still have free rapid tests available at our libraries, and the federal government is also providing another round of rapid tests by mail. I hope everyone will consider the health of others during this holiday season. The holidays will be much more enjoyable when we gather safely and people don't have to stay home because they're sick. And if you aren't feeling well, please stay home. It's better to miss out on something than to get a loved one seriously ill. This week, a letter was sent to the chair of the Prescription Drug Affordability Board from myself and county executives in Prince George's, Howard, Anne Arundel, and the Baltimore area. In the letter, we indicate our strong support for sending upper payment limits on prescription drugs in our state. This is a health equity issue and one of the key reasons I supported the board and the authority given to it in 2019. Drug prices continue to escalate and impact many Marylanders, painting them into a corner when it comes to choosing between their health and other necessities, like rent. In addition to the letter, I joined the video call on Monday asking the Prescription Drug Affordability Board to ask the General Assembly to broaden the group's authority. The goal is to make medications affordable. I also participated in one of several forums this fall held across the state by the Maryland Healthcare for All Coalition and AARP Maryland. They help Marylanders understand how the board can work for them and were critical in obtaining testimonials which reinforced the need for reform. A recent survey found almost half of all Maryland adults between 20 and 60 use some kind of prescription drugs. The percentage skyrockets when you look at older adults. The state must do all it can to keep these costs from getting out of control. High drug costs also impact county budgets here and in our surrounding communities. Allowing companies to continue to push the limit of what the market can bear has created a dangerous situation even for housing in Montgomery County. If we continue to allow that with prescription drugs, lives will be lost. I hope the General Assembly will act on our request and give Maryland's Prescription Drug Affordability Board the tools it needs to fight the rising cost of medicine. I hope that all residents enjoy their holiday break with friends and family. We also want to be mindful of those who don't have family support networks and resources that we take for granted. Our county charities and nonprofits are pivotal to our efforts to keep the people's issues and challenges that impact all of our communities front and center. But with increasing demand and rising costs, county charities need help. Please donate your time, your money, or resources. It's a great way to get an end of the year tax write-off. More importantly, you're providing critical lifelines and opportunities to those in need. Montgomery County employees helped by contributing to our employee giving campaign. This year, we wanted to exceed last year's record high fundraising total of $291,000. Initial results show that we set a new record raising more than $293,000 and still have a chance of meeting my goal of $300,000 by the time calculations are finalized early next year. Thank you to our wonderful employees for helping to contribute to this community, our service organizations to work year round to improve lives in Montgomery County. This thoughtfulness is the testament to the character and goodwill that we have within our county workforce. Thanks again and happy holidays.